Hey there, Internet. I'm Annie. I'm Kit. And I'm Mac. And this is the Gem Jam, where we're doing episode by episode recap the 1980s cartoon Gem and the Holograms, because both it and the comic are truly outrageous. And by outrageous, I mean sad misfits are back. Sad misfits. (sighs) Are you happy about this, Mac? I am joyful. I'm so happy that Roxy's sad. You're terrible. I am terrible, but I love it. Welcome to Misfats number four, guys. AKA the Roxy issue. The Roxy issue. We knew it was coming eventually. It was in Roxy's profile, her original profile, way back in the day that she is illiterate in this universe as well. We had to get there eventually. Here we are. It's like a monkey paw wish. I didn't want it like this. Did you have a sad Roxy headcanon? Because guess what? It's in here. So this is, of course, issue four of the Misfits miniseries. We've got one issue left to go that's going to be, I'm sorry, all I can think of is Roxy. It's going to be Jetta related. Um, There's some breadcrumbs in here that make me very excited to hear about it. But right now the focus is on tiny Roxy and her sad story. Baby Roxy. You know how like every single one of these issues, except for the Blaze one, which is pretty okay, has built on the idea of like feeling very adrift from others and uh, finding a place and finding a family and finding a bunch of awesome ladies in the Misfits? This doesn't have that. Oh, God. You know what? It's going to be like a Band-Aid. Should we just should we just get into it? Let's rip it off. Okay, so do we need a previously? Previously, the Misfits are doing reality TV and they're living in a house that's going to fall into the ocean. And everybody's sad. Everyone has a tragic backstory and it hurts. It's Mackenzie's favorite house of pain. I love houses of pain. Pack it up, pack it up, pack it in. Let me begin. Roxy's mad about bagels. Roxy is very mad about bagels because someone moved her bagels. Roxy is projecting. When Roxy's mad about bagels, she's not actually mad about bagels. A bagel is never just a bagel, she shouts, and... I don't get what the big deal is, this pizzazz in her pajamas. Oh my god, I just realized after reading the issue beginning to end and coming back to page one, look at what shirt she's wearing. Oh no! I actually noticed that right away, and I was like, yes! No! Ah! Kelly! Jen, why? I was focusing on Pizzazz's cool skull footy pajamas, which we haven't seen for a while. You people do this to me. You made me look at this with my own eyes. This isn't, of course, directly stated, but we know it's coming here. But it's also done very well where it's like, just read the darn labels. You can find your precious bagels. And Roxy just glares at her and says, that's it. I can't stay here. Roxy, you signed a contract. You have to literally sign a contract. Do you even bother to read it? And Roxy just gets mad and storms out. Also, Clash reorganized everything because that's what Clash does. She's not a misfit. By the way, one thing I really like about the last page and this one too is that they're doing that thing again where there's that slight uh, letterboxing going on of the recording so you can tell this is all on camera. It's even got like camera one up in the corner. It's a really nice touch. Also, we're zoomed in on Roxy's name tag on her shirt, which says Frank. How dare you? How dare you? So Roxy storms out, she goes to the gym, and she points at the cameras and says, And you, don't follow me. And they're like, yeah, we're gonna follow her. So the next time we see him, we've actually got a camera shot of the camera person must be almost hiding uh, of Roxy going around getting ready for a boxing as she mutters to herself. You can't even find a bagel for breakfast without reading 50 cabinets. And then we see her talking to somebody saying, uh, hey there, there's a little girl here. And Roxy's first question is, are you a boxer? I haven't seen you around. Roxy, what do you think the answer to that question could possibly be? Now, it could be like a cute question, like talking to a kid, sort of talking up to them. I get the feeling that Roxy is genuinely asking whether this 10-year-old girl is a boxer. I think she's probably just gauging to see if this 10-year-old can beat her up because it's very important to know whether or not a 10-year-old can beat your butt. They will surprise you. (laughs) They're small. They're flighty. Uh, But the little girl takes it in stride. Oh God, she looks so cute. Uh, She's got like natural hair and a these two big just pigtails it's so adorable and she's got literal stars in her eyes i feel like maybe the misfits music is not something that she should be listening to at her age i'm just gonna go out there and make a guess nah it's fine it's fine it's fine it's 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 totally fine fine. i mean 
I spent most of my years from when I was 10 to like 15 listening to Evanescence. Okay, yes, obviously the explicit content labels don't actually do anything, but I don't know, maybe she's got a cool dad. He's a boxer. Yeah, he's working out here and said that the little girl here could come over and ask for an autograph. And she says, you're Roxy, you're in the Misfits. I want to be a drummer just like you. And she wants an autograph. Her name is Nevea. It's it's heaven spelled backwards. And poor Roxy is starting to sweat. Because she doesn't know how to spell that. And then she finally notices the camera. Oh boy. And then she just runs away from the little girl. But luckily Jetta's there. Thank God Jetta's here. We love you, Jetta. Keeping it real. Does Jetta just perpetually shadow Roxy, prepared to beat up anybody who messes with her? Yes. Like, Jetta is just in her I'm ready to kill someone outfit. Her tank top, which has been shredded, by the way, says keeping it real (laughs) on a reality show. Jetta thinks she's funny. Jetta is funny. Jetta's hilarious. And she's also threatening the camera crew. And they are terrified of her. I fully believe that Jetta would follow through on her promise to break every bone in their body twice. So she heads off into the locker room and finds Roxy hugging her knees to her chest. Oh, Rox, no. And then we see that it's not the first time that she's been in that position when she's frustrated. And we go to about 12 years ago in Philadelphia. Tiny Philly Roxy. Tiny Philly Roxy who likes drumming already. In the principal's office. And by the way, like we've talked before about how the flashbacks have these really good muted tones and Roboto's color Colors are just in high form here. Everything looks a little dirty. Everything looks a little muted. Everything looks a little sad. And it really adds to the to the atmosphere of it. And we introduce this principal character by having her correct Roxy's grammar, which immediately puts me on edge. Told you it wasn't nothing. Anything. It wasn't anything. Yeah, way to try and prove you're better than a 12-year-old. So she sends Roxy out because Roxy's not going to say what happened. Asks her to send in Laura. And then we go see Laura, who I think this is the exact same tune that the mean girl in Stormer's flashback was singing. Mean girls always sing the same song with modified lyrics. It's true. It's a universal constant. I'm guessing these kids have been in a huge fight, probably because Laura's a jerk. Probably deserve to get punched in the face. And then we see Roxy uh, home in what looks like her dad's garage. It looks like they live in a pretty small apartment together, but I mean, it's got a garage and he's a mechanic, so it can't be doing that bad. Well, relatively speaking. (laughs) Roxy asks her dad if she can get bagels for dinner and her dad's like, yeah, sure. Look, the important thing is, is whether or not you put pizza toppings on top of it. Because when pizza's on a bagel, you can have pizza anytime. Oh, God. You don't understand how often that works its way into my daily life. Why? Why does that work its way into your daily life? Because that commercial was on all the time and both John and I have absorbed it. Our children are going to be quoting that stupid commercial and they won't know why. They will have never seen that commercial. Ever. Roxy's dad finishes up whatever he's doing on this car, goes to a corner with a suspiciously shaped thing with a sheet draped over it and says, it's time for the surprise. Surprise? Why? There's a surprise, says baby Roxy. And her dad says, I know things have been tied around here, sweetheart, and your birthday was kind of a bust. But I've been saving, and I found a good deal at a pawn shop. And so he lifts up the curtain and reveals a drum set. It's a grungy, beaten up, like fifth hand drum set. And Roxy says, it's beautiful. Who's a good dad? It's good to know that in the gem universe, there are many good dads. Although he is pointing out that they are going to need some soundproofing for the garage. Roxy, of course, immediately takes to it. And in one of the cutest panels ever, it is tiny Roxy holding up her drumstick, striking a pose, looking fierce and saying, how do I look? You look perfect, Roxy. He says it's a little heart coming out of his face. Good dad! Speaking of good dad, we have roughly nine years ago. Ah, uh, so this is about three years later. Roxy comes to this kitchen, which... St. Ange did a lot of really good quick detail work just to imply a whole lot of story about how their life is without actually telling you, like, they're not financially stable. It's just, it's really good stuff. And Roxy comes to her dad and confesses what she considers to be the most embarrassing thing in the world, which is that she can't really read. And dad looks up, says, okay, come here. Aww. And they sit down and they talk about it. He just like, it's not like he gets mad or is disappointed in her. He says, just tell me what happened. And Roxy 
Roxy has this little breakdown, which is so heart-wrenching. Oh. Like, it's all coming out of her mouth at one time. You can tell this is stuff that's just been building up in her head, and she has been trying to keep it steady, and it has not worked. And the way she talks about it, how they went so fast and she couldn't catch up, there was so much to learn and it felt impossible. It's not like there's some kind of um, learning disability at, at work here. Yeah, the way she describes it, it sounds like maybe her problems stem from dyslexia. Obviously, learning disorders come in a lot of different shapes and forms and affect you in different ways, but it sounds like that's sort of the avenue they're going towards rather than it just being, ha, Roxy dropped out of high school where everyone learned to read, so she doesn't know how to read. They're actually putting like a face to it and saying these are real troubles that can happen. And another thing to note here, though the focus is on Roxy, is that Frank, her dad, is looking more tired and a little bit more worn. Oh boy, he's thinner. He's much thinner. And paler, even in the color scheme that we're going for. Oh no. Oh, this hurts. And another thing about him being a really good dad is that he says like, no, Roxy, you're not dumb. Don't you ever call yourself dumb. You're so smart and don't ever forget it. Because he points out that even if she has trouble reading, that doesn't mean she's stupid. She's incredibly intelligent in other ways. She picks things up really quickly. She's excellent at the things she's passionate about. That this one thing does not make her stupid. He's such a good dad. And then we immediately smash cut to... Smash cut to funeral. God! Smash cut to funeral. This is a monkey paw. I didn't want to smash cut to funeral like this. I just want to guitar motorcycles. It's like Kelly looked at the Stormer issue and said, no, I can break more hearts. So we're at presumably her dad's funeral and Roxy's aunt shows up. She's dressed very differently. She obviously isn't the same kind of low economic background that Roxy and her dad are from. Yeah, and then it turns out that she and uh, Roxy's dad had a falling out years ago when Roxy was still a baby. You're around 13 now? Yes, would have been around then, I guess. Ugh. There are some implications. Yep. Nothing to be done about it now, I'm afraid. Let's go. Not even a, I'm sorry your dad died. Just, oh, I guess you're living with me now. God, what a good quick way to write a really scummy person. Uh, and now we're we're in the cafeteria at Roxy's school. And oh boy, here comes Laura. Guess what? Laura didn't stop being a jerk. Hi, Laura. She just got more articulate about calling Roxy dumb. And Roxy got way better at punching the crap out of people. Roxy's eyes actually flash red for a second and she just screams at Laura, I hate you. Oh god. And Laura looks absolutely terrified, which there's a part of me that likes that. Yes. So Roxy makes a run for it, basically runs away from school. The principal has told her, like, I've warned you about fighting repeatedly. This is it. He doesn't say what that is, but it's probably at least suspension. But Roxy decides that that's the sign that she needs. We go to uh, presumably her aunt's house. It's obviously much larger, much more innate. They got a giant TV. This place also doesn't look particularly lived in. It looks like everything should be under plastic. It really does. And that's so perfect. That's so in line with like that character to design that we saw earlier as well. She just looks around and says, I don't belong here. Piles all of her stuff into a duffel. Holds her old drum kit, that broken, beaten up old drum kit, tells herself, it's too big. You can't bring it. No! But she takes her drumsticks. Takes her dad's shirt. Ah, the same shirt she's wearing at the beginning of the issue. And with a bit of a sad smile, she looks over her shoulder as she leaves. Ah, so now we got five years ago, making Roxy about like 17. Probably. She's working at a diner. Her diner hair is pretty cute. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I also like her diner outfit in general. This is in New York City, by the way, so she is hopped. She got way the hell out of there. It's just her talking to this dude. I mean, look, I'm just going to be straight. He's a dude with like kind of an undercut, kind of a faux hawk. He's got brown hair and a beard and he's wearing a hoodie. He's one plaid shirt of being about 30% of the guys I see on a regular basis in the Seattle area. Yeah, he's not. he hasn't waxed his mustache though, to his limited credit. I mean, give it some time. He's also not wearing a beanie, which I'm pretty sure, just to be contrarian, he would definitely call, in the United States, a toque. That's what it's called, Annie. Is it? It is. We invented it, we get to decide what it's called. Beanie. 
Moving on. So Roxy gets to talking to this guy because he notices that she's a drummer. She's staring at a catalog with a whole bunch of drum kits in it. She's definitely fidgeting the right way. He says, incessant drumming, always a dead giveaway. What kind of setup do you have? I'm saving up for one, Roxy notes. And she wants the one that's like the one her dad bought her. So the guy asks whether she's in a band. And when she says no, he's like, well, we're looking for a drummer. And it would be a golden opportunity, except for the fact that all the details are on a piece of paper she can't read. Damn it, she says. And just with that despondent look of her staring at the audition information and feeling hopeless, we flash forward back to that same hopeless expression now in the locker room of the boxing gym. Oh, and Jetta's there. She just tells her, Jetta, I I need help. I know, Rox. It's okay. What can I do? Ah, they're such good friends. That's just immediately what she says. It's okay. They're so cute. She has tried. She has tried tried and she hasn't quite gotten of trying to spell that little girl's name. I mean, it was a valiant ever. She did okay. Yeah, she's really close there. I mean, phonetically, that seems like about it. And then Roxy just kind of starts chuckling. Because it turns out Sheila means heaven as well. (laughs) Roxy's like, you named yourself Heaven Burns? Yeah, pretty great, huh? And that's really intriguing. It just makes me really excited for the next issue. I'm excited to get to know Jetta a little more. We need so much Jetta backstory. So Jetta tears up the piece of paper, says, okay, what do you want to say? No, I was wrong. I was wrong. Jetta's shirt doesn't say keep in it real. It says creep in it real. Oh my God. Also, by the way, like the colors that they've used to draw on Jetta's hair with the different textures and like the sort of chalky brush that's used for the white streaks. So good. Oh, and the autograph that Roxy wants to give her is, Nevea, you're going to be a great drummer, your friend Roxy. That's so cute. I really like it when musicians, even like fake TV or comic book musicians, are nice to little kids. And Roxy starts talking about what is she going to do? People are going to find out. I mean, there's cameras on them all the time. They're going to figure out that she can't read. And she says, I've tried so many times. I'm too dumb. You have to be incredibly smart to figure out how to get through a single day without being able to read. Yeah, and that she learns the lyrics the literal first time she hears them just so she doesn't have to try and struggle through them. She's intelligent in a lot of different ways rather than just the one that a lot of people use for a mile marker. And it really sucks that she has gone through so many years, even when her dad has told her to her face that she's not dumb, thinking that that's the only thing that matters. That's terrible. But we also get like the best pep talk from Jetta, including pointing out that Jetta's going to be right there next to Ron no matter what. There's a hug! I don't care exactly what the relationship is defined as. All I know is I want it to stay like this. So uh, as the camera crew are speculating about Roxy and Roxy gives Nevea her uh, autograph, Jetta turns around and is like, well, look, give the girl some peace. And they're like, we we actually have to get this with the whole back of the half the series spread on. She goes, you know what? She needs the room she needs. All right, then. So be it. You wink is so desperate for a juicy story. I'll give you a story. And she looks evil. Oh my god. There's shadow on her face. There's a brightness in her eyes. There's a savage grin. She's ready. She's gonna give us a juicy story. I'm ready, Jetta. Oh, I can't believe that Jetta's gonna throw herself in this grenade for Roxy. It's so good. Oh, so cute. So good. And that's our to be concluded. That's it. To be concluded. To be concluded. We're probably gonna break your heart some more before it's over. I'm cool with that. Oh my god. God, wouldn't it be so good if it turns out that Jetta is actually a member of the royal family? Oh my god. She's related to that eight-year-old duke you hate. No, my rival. He's a viscount. He's my eight-year-old viscount nemesis. She better not. She better not be related to my eight-year-old Viscount nemesis. I've never met him. I know absolutely nothing about him, but he is an eight-year-old Viscount. All right, moving on. Right, my nemesis aside. Oh, God, that issue was harsh. That was a hard issue, you guys. I love it. I want some more of it. This is a fine delicacy for you. This is macnip. Is this comfort food or is this fine dining? Yes. Good answer. It is artisanal mac and cheese. I... Oh my god, I'm drained now. I'm drained. I'm drained after this emotional issue full of monkey paw wishes. I think that is going to do it for us, you guys. Wonderful pain. Pain. All right. So the Gem Jam comes out every Sunday on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and YouTube. You can find us on Twitter and Tumblr. We are at the Gem Jam just about everywhere except on Twitter. We are at Gem Jam Cast. If you want to support the podcast, a like, rating, review, subscribe, comment, wherever you find our podcast is super great, super helpful, uh, especially on iTunes. Help our metrics, helps us get discovered so other people can 
chair in this exquisite pain about Roxy. Spread the pain. That's what I did to Annie with More Than Meets the Eye. God! Robots. And robots! <sighs> If you want to support us financially, you can do that on patreon.com slash the gem jam for a couple bucks a month. You can support both this and other projects such as I Will Fight You. Join us next time for more comics about glam rockers that shouldn't be as sad as they are. Until next time, dear listeners, I'm Annie. I'm Kit. And I'm Mac. And this has been the Gem Jam, where we remind you, Raptor shrieking, so excitement or emotion, it's generally set apart from the misfit by an exclamation point or by a comma when the feeling's not as strong. Hmm. No, the feeling's always strong. There's, there's never a comma. It's always strong.